Well, it is about uh, 18 hours into the ninth day, and we're off for another ride. I forgot to turn my signals on again, so let's get this done. <clears throat> think about and the thing is, is we're definitely going to have to sort that of, the world sort of moves into a more gnostic uh, sort of attitude oh we will have to deal with gnosticism itself at some point in time and this is something that uh, Lionel this uh, Seems like he's going to have a hard time doing that. a number of the conspiracy theories. I mean, we have a lot of people uh, that have now become conspiracy theories. There are a lot of conspiracy theories out there. And ironically enough, although the left doesn't, don't consider themselves to be conspiracy theorists, they are indeed conspiracy theorists. There is no fundamental difference between the two. They have a little bit of knowledge and they say an, and assume an awful lot. Uh, this whole thing with 5G. Well, you would think that 5G was, in, 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 it was never around. Yet, for all those who have routers at the house and don't have Wi-Fi at home, well, what do you think 5G is? 5G is simply the, the services you've had in your house the whole time for Wi-Fi. That's all it is. There's no fundamental difference between the two. There are no real cases you can point to, or no, inf no, no indications that 5G causes cancer or anything along those lines. Oh, what do you see? You'll see once it's in there. Whoa, you'll see. Uh, well, nothing ever emerged out of it. And the thing is, they don't have a they don't have a mechanism to really sort of say, okay, well, what is this? Then they talked about well, these things that everyone calls contrails, right? And they're using they you know, once again, this is a, a, a somewhat technical term. And this comes out of meteorology that, 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 that use clouds as condensation. But if you have any understanding of, of atmospheric physics at all, and this. If you're confusing it with climate science or climatology, I'm sorry, but you're kind of out of touch with things. That's not atmospheric physics. As a matter of fact, you have to chuck all of climate science and sort of just throw it out because it does not meet with the understandings of physics, particularly with the, within, within in terms of the beginning, uh, with Planck's uh, black body uh, radiation. I mean, this is. 
fundamental to thermodynamics uh, in quantum physics, in atmospheric physics. Unfortunately, meteorology treats things as an ideal gas, an ideal liquid, an ideal fluid. So it uses fluid, fluid dynamics. That's why they think about pressure waves and this and that and so on and so forth. The, the irony here is that they're not, they, they haven't sat down and done the length of observation they need to. They haven't gone through the physics. And there's a number, as I said, there's a number of different views. There's a number of different ways of seeing the Earth's atmosphere. And the number of tools and satellites out there to do this are, are, are significant. And you have to go through all of them to sort of to figure out which one is the best one. Because they're not all equal. And it took me about a part of a decade to figure this out in terms of what was good and what wasn't good. But the thing is, most of the scientists today are data scientists. Which means they're nothing more than people who are going after the Da Vinci Code. And then before, the origins of data science is the Da Vinci Code. There's a lot more there to it than just simply calling the term, using the term Da Vinci Code. But it, it, it serves its purpose. In other words, the Da Vinci Code was developed in order to predict the future. And this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to do predictions. But the predictions have never, ever worked out. We have never had a case where predictions have worked out. There are so many people who have their different views and opinions. And again, it's, it's this whole thing where no one wants to be the loser, so they all compete even if they're wrong. And of course, they don't have the time to do to look up and do the deep, the deep dive research and that a researcher does, so they never will. And they won't see that the stuff has always been already been done before. I mean, where do you see atmospheric physics in history? Well, that's Tesla. Tesla did his work in atmospheric physics. And so you do have a guy to go by, but I think a large chunk of well, Tesla's work is now considered to be classified, so it's not necessarily in the market. So you have to go back and do the research all over again. You have to do, you have to do not the theory, the theoretical or the mathematical work, but you have to do the experimental work along the lines of, again, Tesla and Enrico Fermi. The development of the atomic bomb was not predicted. And I think a large chunk of science is presented falsely that there isn't, that there is, oh yes, these are the facts. Well, there are no facts in science. A mathematical proof is a, ma is a proof of nothing. And this has been demonstrated repeatedly, even to the current point of, of the Higgs boson. Nobody was able to predict the Higgs boson, even though they claimed they should, they could have. Oh yeah, 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 we could have done it. That's the whole thing. The whole purpose of CERN is we had predicted where uh, the Higgs boson would be. We told you it was there. Oh really? How long? Why? How long did it take you to actually find it? If you're predicting something, you should know right where it is, and actually not even need a need an experiment to prove it because, well, you already know.
experimentation for, for what we call the, the, the scientific method, which isn't really scientific at all, is simply a proof of what you already know. It's, it's not anything new. It's not exploration. It's not, you know, a higher, higher level under, uh, understanding or anything like that because you're predicting something you already know. But of course, all this was done away with uh, with Voltaire. And of course, no one goes back and checks out, checks out who Voltaire actually was. And so, Voltaire gets credit for things that he didn't actually do. In fact, m most of the work that Voltaire did and he wrote about in his plays wasn't actually his own work. It was the work of others. He simply paraphrased and made pretend that the work was his. And of course, how do you do this? Well, you make fun of other people who, you know, who question what you say, you make fun of them. This is ironically not what the Democrats do. Now they're all, everyone's talking about CBD. Well, they're showing the charts on the CD, uh, 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 from the CDC. On the C uh, on CBD, right? The uh, virus de jour, de jour, is what you want to say. And what is it? The virus is peak at the, in the seasons, spring and then fall. That's why everyone's worried about September. Why September? Well, because the next season's coming up. If it, if these things are spread person to person, in other words, close contact. Why are the charts seasonal? The charts should be following flight paths. They should be following a number of things that relate to the individual in person. You shouldn't see the seasonal infection rates peaking like, as they do. This means that the that the uh, vi the, the, vi the the virus and more particularly the germ, because it's, the viruses are often in germs, in a droplet and water vapor, uh, is already in the air. about 21 hours and 30 minutes into the ninth day of August 2021 and we're heading home oh. the COVID madness is continuing the CBD madness is continuing and it really doesn't make any sense and the thing is in terms of its logic because it really isn't a logic thing. shows this. So here's their theory, right? It's the unvaccinated people that are causing the problem. Person-to-person right? -person transmission. Okay. Yet the peaks of the infections occur during the spring and the fall. That is commonly flu season. That's where you have your infections and your allergies are all within the sinuses. This is where this occurs. The fall and the spring. So this means if, the, if all your infections occur in the fall and spring, that means there are no people on earth between in summer and winter because there are no, there are no, really no infections that are going on. This is where, you, this is where you see the peaks. So 
go the whole issue of person to person transmission doesn't really fly it means if it's seasonal like pollen the infection is airborne it's in the air like pollen and it doesn't matter how much you wear a mask how wear it you, or if you're vaccinated or not you're going to get <laughs> just like the pollen you're going to get some level of infection it depends on how much and the different types depending on the on uh, how the virus is mutated. The, mut the virus mutates a lot. All viruses mutate. This is part of their function. So blaming it on one group or another because what it is, 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 is it's, it, it's triggering people to attack each other. Once again, these so-called tolerant liberals are behaving like oxymorons, and they're creating a level of intolerance that uh, is really quite astounding because they're actually triggering violence. And this is the whole the thing of going to gnosis, is that there's a left-hand path and a right-hand path. The left-hand path never, never reveals itself As evil, it always reveals itself as good, it hides itself. And they're able to convince a number of people that this is the way to go. That this is the right thing to do. They're not going to be, oh, they're going to go out there and commit a whole bunch of evil stuff. No, they're going to tell them they're going to be good. But this is, they're helping people, they're helping humanity, they're being humane. Oh, you know, of course, yeah, okay. What's their solution to solving some of these problems? Right, you got people who are uh, not born properly, you know, they're, they're, they're so-called defectives. How do you solve the, the problems of a defective? Well, that becomes rather easy. If you execute them. You know, the other thing, this is the thing with COVID too. You know, you want to cure people from COVID? The only way you can't get COVID is if you're not breathing. So, choke some to death, kill them. When you're dead, you're not going to get COVID. So you'll solve the COVID problem by killing people. This is the solution of the liberals. It, 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 and this has been the solution of, of liberals historically. Historically, liberals have been killing people as their solution to these various different problems. This is what they do. This is, this is what the whole thing of Auschwitz was. The Jews were believed to be defectives. They advertised them as defectives, so as these Jews were carted off to their death, no one really said, oh, no, they're helping these people out. They didn't, no, they didn't care that they were being carted off to their death. And so the Holocaust happened. We are right back in the same situation as we were before.
<laughs> so what happens is that the general population, thanks to the news and the media, you have a consent being manufactured. This is something that Edward Bernays was talking about, the manufacture of consent. You can get society to do some very horrible things because in this manufacturing of consent, you are now dealing with an amoral society. An amoral society is a society that's not immoral. It's amoral. It's without morality. So things in the discussions of morality don't click. They don't make. They don't make sense. And so they're like, you know, Lionel was talking about, the, you know, psychopathy and uh, sociopaths and psychopaths and stuff like that. They're getting all the different definitions. It doesn't matter. A person who is amoral will have no appreciation or understanding of how others feel. And typically, we're like, we are like that. We, we see things from our own perspective. We don't see others' points of view, others' other perspectives. We only see ours. And this is where it becomes very easy. For liberal, and this is you see, you see this all the way through Pride and Prejudice. You see this in the, in, in, you know, in the uh, the Barchester Chronicles. All of these books, all these books from the 1800s, you'll see the same thing. It's this 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 condition known as pretense that a a an appearance must be created in order for somebody to live to live or have any sense of worth. Your worth is in the pretense, not in the reality of the person who you are. In other words, you have a social value and nothing more. It doesn't matter if you're a good person. In other words, the morality of the person does not matter as long as the pretense is there. And this is, this is sort of what created the, the modern world, is that this whole sense of pretense. was there prior to humanism. And so when as new humanism replaced Roman Catholicism and Protestantism, as a child of this sort of environment, it simply, you know, in many cases, made the attempt to remove pretense from the existence. But it didn't do that, because it, 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 pretense and this sort of snobbishness is part of society. It's part of who people are. People tend, 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 tend to seek ranking. There's always division society, even if it's not a real division society. It's something that's created uh, by uh, individuals who have enough power to create social standing. This is why women in many cases, in terms of Voltaire and these, these academic salons, this has been like this for a long time. Uh, if you don't invite some, you, you, you want to make your, your, your party well known, you want to get the word out there, you have a party, you throw a party, and amongst your group, there, you leave out certain influential women, women who have, uh, are well known in society, you leave them out. This creates an envy, this creates a conflict, and now people start talking about why was this person left out of the party? But this creates also a buzz for the party. It makes the party that was not supposedly as popular as these other ones who were left out, it makes that party a much better party because all, all of a sudden it's now being talked about. And then, of course, the, the women who are left out want to outdo the people who threw the party. And so they're going to make an effort to outdo <laughs> that group. And, of course, they're going to invite the main people who were, who were there. And this is how Voltaire, people like Voltaire, became popular. Even though he said he really didn't say much of anything. 